11. Well, it's gone down a little bit. Used to be what, 15 or 19 or yeah, several so, every day. Oh, well. You know, in our business, you get used to that. You know, it's just like when you're a doctor. Well, you know, people are going to get sick and die. Oh, well, you know, we do our best. And we can't do better than what we can do. Uh, if we try too hard, then we uh, fall down because of over-endeavor. So we simply have to do what we can do. And then people uh, have to be responsible for doing their part. That means keeping their promises, doing their homework, looking up their misunderstood terms, clearing their doubts. Huh? I'm not a mind reader. I can't know what your doubts are, you know, and then like manifest the proper behavior for you to feel comfortable about resolving your doubts. No, either you, huh? oh, either you resolve your doubts or you'll fall down. It's really up to you. So uh, please try to uh, do your best also. We do our best. We uh, maintain our promise. We give this knowledge without freely, without any uh, payment. Uh, you can just log on every day at 6.30 and see the darshan. I mean, where else can you do that? Uh, there's no other Krishna temple in the world that's doing this. No other devotees in the world that are doing this. So uh, if you come and associate with us, hear from us, then you should be developing faith. And if you're not, it means either you're breaking the principles or you're making some offenses or you have some serious misunderstanding. And uh, I can't clear your doubts for you. You have to do that yourself. All the knowledge is there in Srila Prabhupada's books, but you have to read them and think about them. Huh? Uh, this is also the only group of devotees in the world that's going to tell you to read and then think about what you read. Huh? Everybody else is going to tell you, read a little bit <laughs> and then surrender. <laughs> no, that's not going to work because you're going to have doubts. So read everything, and then think about it, and then surrender, and then you won't have to change your mind because of doubts or weakness of heart or offenses or whatever. But we see so many people come and go. It's really a shame. If people would just take this teaching at its face value, the dictionary meaning of the words. Don't speculate. I see a lot of people with so-called intelligence who speculate on the meaning of this teaching. And they drive themselves crazy. They give themselves all kinds of negative thoughts and feelings uh, because they allow their minds to, to speculate on this philosophy when they should be looking up the meaning of all the words and clearing all the words. Huh? What was there that instance today? What was that word? Ontology. Oh, ontology? Oh, no. You were talking with somebody. Tell the story, Uddhava. Grab the mic. Give him the mic. Hare Krishna. Yes, we were uh, on a Skype conversation for, uh, for a university student and uh, we were going through the assignments and like that. And the first question was, what is the esoteric teaching? So the response was, it's an ontological study of the consciousness and like that. And I said, oh boy, those are big words. So what does it mean? And, and uh, as soon as we found the first word, there was a completely complete misunderstanding of the meaning ontology of the right. word ontology I don't know how many times we've discussed the meaning of ontology I wish I had a nickel for every time <laughs> we could buy our ticket to India <laughs> well maybe a dollar 
Yeah, a little more. <laughs> Inflation. But that's a, that's a two dollar word, so that's a discount. A <laughs> dollar. <laughs> Ontology. Ontology and consciousness are very deeply related. If everyone understood just the meaning of these two words clearly, then they would understand the whole esoteric teaching. You, you can't have consciousness without ontology, because the ontology gives you the background and foreground and their relationship. Do you want a roll of tape for that? I have tape in the bedroom. An underfart. Well, okay, don't fix it. It ain't broke. But if it goes off again, there's a roll of tape in the bedroom. Um, if you understood the, really the meaning of consciousness, what it is, and then you understood the meaning of ontology, what it really is, how it works, then you'd be in a position to understand everything. If you just went into these two words, uh, if I say, the ontology of consciousness, and then you go into and you study and you clear the meanings of these words, then you'll understand everything perfectly. But to do that is probably, I don't know, a two-year study. It's a big piece of work. Kana, you've been with us, what, a year and something now? Mm -hmm. Are you starting to feel like you understand what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, take the mic. Yeah, pop quiz. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to know how you feel about. Remember when you first came, we would have these these long discussions at. Oh, at <laughs> tell tell us about that. Uh, sometimes during those evening darshans, we were talking. I just felt so useless and frustrated, and it's like so swamped with misunderstood terms. And it was actually quite desperate. I was going, ah, oh. I actually sometimes I dreaded it. I was like, oh no, here we go again. I'm going to sit here and feel like an idiot. <laughs> so, but like, you know, as you said, look up the words and the terms and, and keep at it and keep working on it. And like, look, looking, up, looking up at it once isn't going to help. You have to keep looking at it right. and keep researching it and just keep yeah. going. Because guess what? You have misunderstood terms in the definition. Oh, big time. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper, and sometimes you go, ah, oh. <laughs> <See? laughs> it go on forever trying to clear up all these mistakes, but you just have to keep at it, keep plugging away, keep mm -hmm. beating at that ball until it finally cracks down, and mm -hmm. you start seeing some light coming through, and you go, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the unconsciousness created by misunderstood word definitions is enough to completely block off your spiritual consciousness. Huh? Akanai is now sitting there nodding. Huh? Yeah, really, big time. So, uh, you know, we're, we're not just kidding about this. It's not just busy work. Huh? It's, not to, it's not a make wrong thing. Eh, hey, you don't know the definition. Yeah. No. It's, it's a, uh, a very powerful method for you to recover your education and clear up so many of the things that are bothering you, so many of the things that you feel bad about. Uh, you'd be amazed if you do a good job of clearing up word definitions, how good it will make you feel, how clean, how free. Uh, because all of a sudden you're going to understand all these things that will be clear that were completely opaque before, uh, just a black hole, you know. And, and what happens is that that black hole of emotional charge from a misunderstood term sucks away at your attention 24 hours a day, leaving you less attention, less consciousness for other things. This is a fact. So as you clear up all of these misunderstood words, the, conscious, the unconsciousness caused by them gradually lifts and, and disappears and evaporates. And what you have left is clear meaning. Uh, our ontological disease is that we don't know the actual meaning of anything. We throw words around, 
Huh? Like that fellow you were on the conversation with today. Oh, the esoteric teaching is the ontological science of consciousness, blah, 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 blah. Well, this is called glibness. Huh? So what does ontological mean? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but he can, yet he can reel off this whole spiel about what the esoteric teaching is. Uh, he can't define any of it. He doesn't know what it means. So the ontology has been called the meaning of meaning. And similarly, the uh, misunderstood word phenomenon, misunderstood terminology, uh, is a lack of meaning. So how can we understand the meaning of meaning if we don't even know the meaning 